Hey everyone, how are you doing? My name is Darren and I am here with my friend Josh. We wrote and directed Spiral, which you are going to see tonight. What are we do? What am I introducing? What well, we're doing and where we're going. Oh, what's up, everybody? Welcome back to the Alex Leba channel. My name is David. I'm your host for today. And what me and uh, the King of Cringe are doing today is we're gonna go to the movie theater to see um, a movie about swirls, which is awesome because me and Leba are both huge fans of the Saw franchise. Hence the shirt I'm wearing. I have to wear a hoodie over it because I'm too fat and my, my muffin top will stick out if I don't wear a hoodie. We're big fans of this franchise. Uh, we'll talk about that, I think, when we review the movie, why we love this franchise so much. But what's extra exciting is uh, we're seeing it in an IMAX theater. Uh, this is one of the biggest IMAXs near where I live. Uh, it's awesome. I love seeing movies at this theater. There used to be a CeCe's Pizza across the street from it that I would, like, I'd get off of work, go to CeCe's, binge on pizza, and then just pass out in the theater watching movies. But unfortunately, that CeCe's is closed now which is very depressing, but I still will go to this theater all the time because I love this IMAX screen. Um, I have AFC A-list, so the ticket costs nothing for me, pretty much. <laughs> I don't know why you don't sign up for A-list. Well, I guess you don't go to the theater that much, right? Also, we're going to be popping up in theaters, um, meaning that, that myself, Josh Solberg, Max, you never know, Mark and Oren, who's going to pop up in a theater? I'm going to go to a couple of different cities uh, and be there opening weekend. So make sure you come out, uh, see the movie, and really want people to see this in the theaters. Are you going to secretly show up to any theaters this weekend? And uh, yeah, I'm going to, it's showing not too far from, I'm downtown now. So yeah, I'm gonna. I don't. I don't want to say where. Chris Rock or Maricel or myself or Max or Sandy. We all might be in the theater with you because we are. We are hitting theaters this weekend. We're hitting them hard. What are your uh, before thoughts uh, before going into this movie? Okay, my expectations are pretty much tempered, right? I'm not expecting it to suck. I'm not. A, I'm not expecting it to be amazing. I'm just expecting like a good, gory spin-off movie. I don't think it's gonna be a sequel or prequel. I think it's just gonna be like a. A spin-off, literally yeah. a spin-off. I like Darren Lynn Bowsman. I like his movies, I like his style. I think he's a talented dude. I hope this movie is hugely successful because he needs a big break. He's never gotten like a huge blockbuster film that he could direct. Like so many other directors have, like um, what's his face? The dude who did Godzilla, Gareth Edwards, right? He went from a micro-budget indie to Godzilla. Um, Adam Wingard just did Godzilla vs. Kong. Like I want Darren Lynn Bowsman to get a big, huge blockbuster movie. Darren Lynn Bowsman, like, I feel like he's good he's known I'm sure he's doing okay money wise um, but he's like he's not a household name and I think he deserves it because he's a talented dude what are your thoughts on uh, my videos recently David uh, pretty terrible except for the ones that star this guy those have been good the Paul Flores ones are good too but he kind of I think he's quit the rest of them it seems like you've kind of stopped posting you know you're doing your thing they're not better they're not worse they're Alex Labe videos I think people watching your channel know what they're gonna get when they tune in Except for when they tune in my videos and they're just like, whoa, these are much better than the normal videos. And the guy is much more handsome than anyone else who's been on this channel. So I'm a diehard Saw fan. He's a huge Saw fan as well. I've been a fan of the movies ever since like 2008 or 9. Uh, I'm sure you've been a fan of them for longer than me. I saw the first one in the theater in, in 2004 when it came out. All through the end of the 2000s, like Saw, the Saw franchise owned Halloween, man. And that's that's what I think kept the series alive for so long is they, they put out a movie every Halloween. Like what other franchise has done that for seven years in a row like so that anyway that's why the franchise I think has become so popular and uh, so successful other than being good movies it, well yeah that first one and, is so cool okay so, so like what is it that you love about the series so much it came out at a time in my life where there really wasn't a lot of super gory movies right that was the thing that happened in the 80s and then the 90s like there wasn't a lot of like super gory movies you know most of the horror movies were like silly stuff like Chucky you know and they weren't really serious about the gore the gore was like fun 
you know? So the Saw movie, I just love how dark that tone is. I loved Seven. I saw that as a teenager. I loved it. I've always loved that movie. So Saw was very reminiscent of Seven, obviously. Um, and that's kind of what, uh, what drew me to it, is like the subject matter. But I just love the um, the traps are so clever and so fun. Like, that's what I think another thing, it's kind of like Final Destination franchise, where those, those traps, it, they're just so inventive and creative, right? The concepts, they, like the crazy messed up ways they come up with to kill people and maim people's bodies is, yes, disgust, disgusting and grotesque if you're, if you're squeamish, but just so clever and, and interesting and fun. Um, you're like, what are the traps going to be like? Every year, going into a Saw movie, every Halloween was like, man, what are the traps going to be like in this one? We're going to see some crazy stuff. And you know what? The series well, never disappointed. Well, crazy plot twist, are they going to come up with Exactly. Next? The plot twist. Like, that's the thing. People went for the traps and the plot twists, and the franchise delivered that every year. year I came year. for the plot and the story, not for the gore. Or see, blood. I came for the gore. Like, I Do you want to go to Panda Express? That's what drew me to the series was, I'm like, oh, this looks like an interesting little horror movie or dark thriller. Um, and then it ended up being super gore. And I was like, whoa, this is amazing. Um, and I love the franchise. Yeah, I just love the, the cleverness of the traps, the insane plot twists, right? You, you could never guess how the movie's going to end. From the first movie on through all of them, you're just like, no idea how this is going to end. You know, I know there's going to be a plot twist in here somewhere, and that's sort of the fun of the movies. That's where guns and violence belong, in my opinion, is in movies. Not in real life. Don't like it in real life. Love it in movies. Not a big fan of guns, but a movie with tons of guns and shootouts? Sign me up. Why do you love the Saw franchise? I love the Saw series because it pretty much uh, created its own style with uh, the way that they're shot, edited, the color grading, the music. The music is... Um Charlie Klaus who's awesome. Yeah, yes. Yeah. You're right about the editing, the crazy, like, spinning yes. camera, quick cutting. It definitely, like, was uh, one of the first films that I watched that made me, like, pay attention and think about film editing. Music is phenomenal throughout every single one of them. Yeah, that theme is so iconic. Exactly. It's like it the just... Halloween theme, it's like the Jaws theme. They're not technically immaculate. Or yeah, yeah. It's not masterful filmmaking going on here. I don't think anyone watching these movies expects that. You know what you're gonna get going in. You're gonna get like a good, suspenseful, gory, clever little horror film. You're not gonna get some master class in filmmaking, okay? This isn't Scorsese here. You know, we're just, we're here for the fun. Darren Lynn Bowsman is a, a sick SOB, so I know he can deliver with the gore. I think the overall tone of the movie, I hope, I hope it's serious. I'm trying to think of interesting ways to shoot this. Like, really up close like this, further away like this. Yeah, just mix it up. Down like this. Just mix it up. I look good from any angle. Darren and I am here with my friend Josh. We wrote and directed Spiral. We're excited to watch the movie with you. Uh, we're going to be here afterwards. We're going to do a Q&A. Uh, any questions you may have. How many Saw fans are here tonight? Do you ever want to see Saw? Awesome! Good. 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 Don't spoil it. Uh, I was going to do a drinking game with you, but they don't have alcohol with you. It's a great drinking game that anytime someone says fuck, you get a shot. You have to be drunk in the first like six minutes. Um, but instead, guys, listen, thank you for coming out. Uh, Josh, you want to say something? No, just thank you for being here. We're really psyched and we're looking forward to talking afterwards. Yeah, so enjoy the movie, guys. Uh, we will be here afterwards and we will talk to you about the movie. All right? All right, let's watch Spiral, everyone. Director Darren Bozeman. Co-writer Josh Stolberg. Well, first off, thank you guys so much for returning to the theaters and not watching something on Netflix. This isn't your first rodeo in the Saw arena. Darren, I know you directed Saw 2, 3, and 4. What was it about uh, this particular story? Was there a certain creative itch that you were most eager to scratch uh, diving into this new territory? You know, I left Saw 4 14 years ago, 
and uh, I didn't think I'd ever come back. Ooh, that's a, that's a that killed the mood. Can we, can, we dim, can we dim those down, please? I look a lot better in the dark, trust me. So I left 14 years ago, and I, I thought that I had done everything that I could do with the Saw franchise, and I'd much rather leave with the number one franchise than watch it die. It saw four ended, I said that was it, and then I thought I was done until you get a call from Chris Rock, and when he calls, you answer. And that was that simple for me. Like I, you know, when you hear he wants to, to re, kind of uh, reinvigorate the Saw franchise. We had actually been writing a totally different Saw film that was supposed to kind of figure inside of the first seven films. We had written the first draft of that. We thought that was when we were shooting, and then all of a sudden we got a phone call from the producers, Mark and Oren saying, oh, Chris Rock's calling you in a few minutes. Uh, he wants to do a Saw film. When he uh, gave us a call and was like, we are, I'm a huge fan of the, of, of, of the genre. I'm a huge fan of Saw. Um, it became really exciting, and he had some great ideas about the direction to go with the film. I think what's so great about working with Chris Rock is that I remember one afternoon my wife came to set and yelled at me. Chris was standing there. You know, I was really embarrassed, and Laura, my wife, walks away, and Chris just went into like a 40-minute monologue about <laughs> keeping my wife happy. And it was like I was watching a Chris Rock stand-up special for just me. It was hilarious because he was literally sitting there giving me some of the best relationship advice and the most hilarious relationship advice. And that's just who he is. I think he put a lot of himself into it, a lot of the stuff he says. He said, I don't want to go in here and try to be funny. He's like, but my character could say things that are humorous. I mean, he's not playing anything for jokes. He's doing it and he really, that is who he is. Like when you hear him talking about the whole thing in the subway, that's him. And I also feel like one of the reasons that he does that is to make it uh, feel more real for him. And one of my favorites was what Chris Rock did so well is that he was really cognizant of when things got too serious. He does this uh, this monologue and he was really nervous. It was very early on in the shoot. And this was his first really big dramatic role like this. He did this before Fargo. He had this really dramatic scene where he, he finds out uh, that Boz died and he's got this two minute monologue. And a lot of it got cut out. We all clapped when it was over. The next day he comes back in and he was like, I gotta do that again. And I was like, no, it's great. He's like, no, man, it was too serious. I gotta do it again. And he does the exact same thing, exactly the same, but he added one thing in there. And the line he added was, he goes, he was supposed to say, I know some of you guys hate me. I know some of you can't stand me. And he continues on. And he goes, he comes back to do it again. And he goes, I know some of you hate me. I know some of you can't stand me. I know some of you are mad that I fucked your mother. And then he continues on. That was just him wanting to redo it and add that little fuck your mother line. And that was hilarious. And that changed the entire meaning of the scene. And that's what Greg Chris did so well is realizing when things are getting too serious and to lighten it up. This feels like one of your more larger scale films that you've done, um, especially the larger scale Saw film. I don't even know what the budget of this was. I saw it say on IMDb it's 40 million and I can guarantee that's off by like 35 million. It's crazy because I've done movies that cost a million dollars and I've done movies that cost 15 to 20 million dollars. And the reality is they're all the same. You never have enough time and you never have enough money. I just shot a movie in Thailand and I sh had 17 days, to 18 days to shoot it. You know, the entire time I was crying saying if I just had five more days, like 500 more thousand dollars in five more days. And on this, which we had 40 days to shoot, I was like, I need 10 more days and just 100,000 more dollars. Because the bigger your movies get, the more people are brought in and the longer they need to do their jobs. Everything just takes longer, the bigger it is. We'll have these great ideas. We'll, we'll Josh now and Peter get on the phone and we'll have an idea. And we'll get all excited and we'll pitch it. And they'll be like, no, we already did that in Saw 5. And I'll be like, oh, what? A, no, that was in Saw 7. Can't do that. Or we come up with a great idea, but it's just not visual. Like, it doesn't look the way that we anticipate it to look. And I think, how many times have we changed the traps in this? Like, 50? Oh, yeah. I mean, there were, we probably had 50 different traps over the course of the writing process. And then you also have a director who is like, I'm not gonna do a trap unless it actually works. As an example, in the opening trap with the tongue, uh, in the original script, up until a few days before we shot, um, it was fish hooks. It was all, like 20 fish hooks around his tongue. And when Darren was talking to the folks who help us with traps, they were like, yeah, the hooks themselves would rip through the tongue and it wouldn't pull the tongue out. So it wound up getting changed at the last minute to be the, the clamp. We have engineers build them. It's not a production design thing. They're built by engineers. We do make it a point to make sure that everything that we show from a trap wise would do what it what it does. As fun as Jigsaw was, like when they, when you guys use lasers in Jigsaw, <laughs> I got so mad is, is like, I did the needle pit. Like that was like simplistic. That was 
simple. And I wanted to take the traps back and go back to a more simple uh, storyline. I think that's what this is. It's not as complicated and dense as Saw 1 through 8. Yeah, I like the lasers. Fuck you. You had a transition style where you would switch scenes and like... You're going to make me cry. I know you're asking me. Yeah. You're asking me what happened to the transitions. There is a difference of style between myself and sometimes... Pretty, it happens on every movie. Where I think things are really cool and other people don't think they're so cool. So what he's talking about is in Saw 2, 3, or 4, I had these really elaborate in-camera transitions where we would have movable walls and... Like one that happened in Saw 4, the guy throws her through a glass mirror or through a mirror and they actually fall into a police station and the entire wall flipped backwards so we can 360 in the police station. It's an impossible shot. You're just like, how do you do that? So when I came back on Spiral, I said, this, I, I gotta go to the biggest, coolest, most insane transition ever. And we shot some of them. And then the producers saw them and they were not amused. They were too showy and they were right. They, they were very much, look at me and look how cool I am. Let people know you saw the movie, tweet about it. Hashtag Spiral. Uh, we will always respond to you or we'll retweet yourself. I don't care if you hated it, and we respond to people that hate it too. We just want people to know that this is out here and it exists. We want people to see it in the big screen uh, because we're really proud of the movie. We really hope you guys liked it, and I'm so excited that you guys were able to see it like this. So thank you guys for being here. And we have posters. a whole bunch of posters that we signed. Everybody can have one. So yeah. any posters. We're gonna take a picture really quick. It's gonna be on my Instagrams later. Okay, on three, two, one, yeah! Thank you guys so much. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Jesus, David, you really need to lay off the crack. <laughs> Hi, Alex. <sighs> All right. What's up, Alex? Not much. I just got back from uh, seeing Spiral and IMAX. Dude, it was so sweet. Just hearing that Hello <laughs> Zet music again and like... I just got back from seeing Spiral with Darren uh, Bousman and uh, Josh Dahlberg. It was awesome. Yeah, okay. What? They were doing a showing in Dallas and I went to it and I uh, I got to watch it with them and then see a live Q&A after and they signed three of my movies and we all got, uh, the whole theater got uh, signed mini posters. It was it was an amazing experience. Really, dude. It's awesome. Bullshit. Oh, is it bullshit? You see that shit? Yeah. And I sold the vlog for your channel with your camera. Yeah, you like it? You like it? But what I did with it, or like a little frame, but there's a... Let me give you a better one. So if you guys have seen the last video, you guys know that he lives in Texas. We're gonna go to uh, Texas tomorrow. I cannot wait. Dallas, dude. Uh, anyone in the room for Dallas? We are gonna be in Dallas tomorrow hosting a very cool screen. Yeah, we'll see you in Dallas. Bye, everyone. Basically, I'm gonna be having a chance to meet Darren Bowsman and uh, Josh Stauber. And so basically, I'm gonna go and stake out and wait for them to show up because I'm a creepy son of a bitch. It's only like 20 minutes from me. I'm really nervous about it all working out. I'm seriously
serious about this. I'm dedicated to going to this thing in case I get an opportunity for him to sign something. Uh, what I'm taking is I'm taking Saw 2, and then I'm also taking Saw 3 to try and get signed. Those are my two favorite Saw sequels. Hi, I was wondering if you guys had any copies of the movie Jigsaw. It doesn't look like I have any copies of that one. I do not see a copy of Jigsaw. Yeah, we got Jigsaw, okay. Do you think you can take me up to Dallas? No, I'm good. Listen, listen, do you know who Darren Lynn Bowsman is? The director of Saw 2, 3, 4, and the new movie Spiral. He's gonna be introducing a showing, and I'm gonna go try and meet him. So, uh, you wanna take me up there now? No, I'm good. John, you could take an Uber. I could, but uh, that's a lot of money, and I don't want to. All right, John, there will be something in it for you, though, if you do take me. How about a 10-piece McNugget from McDonald's? No, I'm good. A 20-piece McNugget. McDonald's. With a large coconut or large fry too? Yep. Okay, let's go. <laughs> let's go. Alright, you wanna go right now? gonna head over to the theater and then I'm just gonna wait there and the director of Spiral yeah yeah he's gonna be here today the only one that he is scheduled to be in and do is not a public show that means you can't buy tickets for I've just been sitting here for like two hours now I really want to get up and ask for his autograph but I'm, I'm, I'm afraid I'm gonna be too scared worst that could happen is he says no so I just gotta lower my expectations to him saying no. He like pointed me out to Darren Bowsman's publicist and she said she's checking to see how many tickets there are. So I might get in. He said, since you're the only one here sitting here waiting for him, he said I, that I must be like a real fan. Darren Bowsman's publicist came up to me. She said she can get me into the 7.30 Q&A or the 7.30 showing where I'll watch it with them. And then there's a Q&A afterwards. And then I mentioned to her that I have stuff that I would maybe like them to sign if they have the chance. And she said that she'd asked for me. Oh my god, I'm freaking out. I'm gonna be the like the only kid in there watching it with like all of his family and stuff. My name is Darren, and I'm here with my friend Josh. We wrote and directed Spiral, which you are gonna see tonight. And then Josh signed my jigsaw, Darren signed saw two and three for me. It, it's awesome, dude. It was awesome. <laughs> so, like, um, tell me more about it. What do you think of the movie, huh? Alex? Jesus. <laughs> um, why do you have, like, five chins right now? The Saw movies. Fucking love the Saw movies, man. They've just been a really big staple of my life. I talked about this movie more than any other movie. I can't explain how much I love this movie. I've seen it dozens of times. The Saw films in general, I think, are underrated. If you actually watch all the movies and pay attention to the story, it's actually really cool and interesting. The first Saw movie is actually one of my top 10 favorite films of all time. It has my favorite musical score of all time. It has my favorite ending of all time. I actually got the Q&A one, which was in by only. What's it now? It was like a 40 minute Q&A about the movie and about the Saw franchise and stuff. <laughs> and then um, afterwards they signed my movies and they gave the whole theater I was in. A poster signed by them both. It's become kind of a joke with the movie community that I'm just obsessed with Saw. As I've said a hundred times, this is my favorite horror film. And I got the Saw Uncut DVD. Saw 2, I got the Saw 2 DVD. Saw 3, Saw 4, Saw 5. Saw 5 Blu-ray, Saw 6, Saw 3D. Alex, I know you've been a Saw fan for, you know, pretty much your whole life. 
since you were really young. But um, I've been a Saw fan for about almost a year now, about eight months. And uh, I got this experience and you did. I wish you could have been there, could have been there with me, bro, but you just weren't. Would it be possible for you to see this song? Hell yeah, dude! Yeah, of course, of course. Uh, do you want to name? Uh, no. Just, just... Have a great night, thank you so much. I'm gonna leave it out so it doesn't uh, smear. Yeah. Saw 2 and 3 are my two favorite Saw sequels. Oh, awesome! I, I really like 2. Uh, I wrote 2, so that makes me happy. Oh, did you? Yep. I thought you just directed. Wait, let's take a little look-see back here. Uh, is my name on here? Where do we see? <laughs> oh, I don't know. Yep, Darren, written by Lee Winnell and Darren Lynn Bowsman. Boom! Can I get a picture? Yep. Thank you. How jealous of me are you at this moment in time, right now? <laughs> I'm not jealous at all. Oh, you're not? Nope. I mean, I'm uh, really glad that you uh, got that experience. I'm happy for you, buddy. That's nice, Alex. Thanks. I mean, I thought you were gonna throw a fit. I thought you were gonna like literally jump off a cliff or something like that. No, I'm happy oh, no. for you. Oh man, I really misjudged you, Alex. I thought you were gonna be super jealous, try and buy my spiral poster off me for like 150 bucks or something. All right, I'll talk to you later. I wrote to. Oh, did you? Yep. I thought you just directed me. I know he went with David tonight to go see it for the first time. He's probably going to be so super hyped up that he got to go see it, but I'm just going to ruin his day by telling him I got to see it with the director and got my shit signed and stuff. This is super exciting for me because, you know, I love to piss Alex Leba off. <laughs> Sorry, the label. What are we gonna go see? Spiral. Why would we need to go see Spiral? I got a copy right here. What? We gonna waste money buying a movie ticket? We got to get freaking Spiral. Okay. Then case closed. Let's just. We don't have to go anywhere. Okay. I have finally seen Spiral from the Book of Saw. I finally sat down and watched the movie with my own two eyes. Now I feel fulfilled in life. <laughs> Dear Alex. I know how big of a Saw fan you are, and when you heard about my experience with Darren and Josh, you probably wanted to kill yourself. So I felt bad and put a gift in this package along with your camera. What? Because I love you. Thank you.